Circles, Codes and Tangents, KCC 2020, Paper 2, Question number 23. In the figure below, A, B, C, D are points on the circumference of the circle, center O. A tangent to the circle at A intersects chord CD produced at E. Line AB is parallel to line EC. Angle AED is equals to 45 degrees and angle ABD is equals to 40 degrees. So all the angles are indicated in the figure. Uh, the question A, calculate the size of 1 angle ADB. That is the first question, angle ADB. 2 angle OCD. Then part B of the question, given that ED is equals to 3.5 centimeters and DC is equals to 4.9 centimeters, calculate correct one decimal place. 1. The length of the tangent AE. 2. The radius of the circle. So those are the questions. So let's go to the first part of the question. How are you supposed to calculate the size of angle ADB? Size of angle ADB. Now this is the angle ADB. This is the angle ADB. Let me mark the angle. So that is the angle you're supposed to calculate. Now to calculate this angle, you need to combine so many properties involving circles, chords, and tangents. And we shall fill all the angles that are in this figure regardless of whether we are required to get them or not. That will help us using all the properties that we know. So let me start by filling a certain angle here. Uh, looking at these two parallel lines, that is AB and EC. So AB is parallel to EC. So I'd like you to look at this line. DB is a transversal. And therefore, this angle 40 is alternate to this angle that is here. Let me feel it. So this angle is also 40 degrees. And the reason is because these are angles in a transversal and they are alternate angles. So given that this line EC is parallel to AB, so DB acts as a transversal and therefore this angle is equivalent to that angle, which is 40 degrees. Now after getting that, there is still another angle that you can manage to get. That is angle EAD. Angle EAD. This angle, this angle that is here, EAD. Let me mark the angle. So this angle here. That angle is in the alternate segment with angle D, B, A. So this angle here, 40 degrees, is in the alternate segment with this angle, given that E, A is a tangent. So this angle, therefore, is 40 degrees as well. And also, this angle that is here is in the alternate segment with this angle that is here. So this should also be equal. Then after doing that, we have a triangle here, triangle E, D, A, and we have two angles, that is 45 and 40, so it is possible to get this angle that is here. The sum of angles in a triangle should add up to 180, so when you add this angle plus this plus this, you should get 180. And when you calculate this, this will be 45 plus 40, that is 85, 180 minus 85, this will be 95. 95 degrees. Again, look at this straight line, EDC. Look at these angles that are here. We have 95, we have this 40, we have this angle that is missing. So we are going to get this angle by using the property of angles in or angles on a straight line. They should add up to 180. So these angles 90 plus 40, that will give uh, 135. So what is remaining to make 180? And that is uh, 45. So that angle is 45. So when you add this is 135. So this will be 135. 90 plus that. Then plus 45. You realize that will be 
180. Again, we had noted that this angle 45 is in the alternate segment with this angle that is here. This angle is in the alternate segment with this angle and therefore this angle would also be 45 degrees. Again, this is a straight line, this tangent. Look at these angles along this tangent, straight line. So we have this angle that is uh, 40 plus 45, that is 85. The angle that is remaining there to make 180 will be 95 degrees. So now you notice that the sum of the angles on this straight line will be 180. Then from there, there is a line that I will draw here. Uh, let me complete this. Draw that line. It will help us so much. And um, having that line, there is um, another angle. There is another property here. I'll see. We're going to obtain. Look at this angle that is here. And uh, look at these 40 degrees. So we have this chord. This chord. Chord BC subtends this angle at the center. And also it subtends this angle 40 degrees at the circumference. So this chord CB subtends an angle here at the center. And also it subtends these 40 degrees at the circumference. This is a property connecting uh, to that. That angle subtended by the same chord at the center. The chord here is CB. This angle subtended at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference, which is 40. Yeah, by the same chord. So this chord, the same chord is subtending this angle at the center and this angle at the circumference. So it should be twice. That is a property. So this angle should be twice the angle subtended at the circumference. And the angle subtended at the circumference is 40, so twice that is 80 degrees. So that is the property. Then look at these um, two. This is a radius. OC is a radius. OB is a radius. So this gives an isosceles triangle. And uh, if this is 40, the base angles should be equivalent. Should be 50 degrees and 50 degrees. Uh, since the sum of these angles, this triangle should add up to 180. Then, there is still another property that you can use. I'd like you to observe this. So this is a cyclic quadrilateral that is D, A, B, C. So opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral should add up to 180. That means if I take this angle at A plus the angle opposite to that, that is C, that one should give me a sum of 180. Again, if I take this angle at D, I add the opposite angle that is at B, should give me 180. So look at this angle, 95 plus 50, that is um, 145. That is 145. So what is remaining? 35 to make 180. So this angle should be 35. I repeat that the opposite angles, two pairs of opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral should add up to 180. So angle A plus angle C should give me 180. Angle D plus angle B should give me 180. So that is why I've obtained 95 plus 50, 145. So what is remaining? 135, that 35 is remaining here. Then we have this angle at B. The angles at B is uh, 50 plus 40. That is 90. 90 plus uh, 40 plus 45. That will give 185. So this angle here that is remaining, this very small angle here will therefore be 5 degrees. So this angle should be 5 degrees. Now when you add all the angles at B plus all the angles at D, you'll get 180. All right. Angle ADB. Angle ADB, ADB, this angle, we already got that as uh, 45 degrees. Uh, in this question, we are not required to give reasons. We are not required to give reasons. So if you are to give reasons, we would give uh, 
any reason that you have used, any property that you have used in obtaining that angle. So that is all for that. Then for angle OCD, OCD, O, C, D, we got that angle here. That is 35. So we already obtained that. That is 35 degrees. And then after doing that, now we can go to the other part. So part B, given that ED is equals to 3.5 and DC is equals to 4.9, calculate correct to one decimal place. One, the length of the tangent AE. Two, the radius of the circle to max. So let's go to the diagram. ED is 3.5. Is there. Indicated 3.5. And um, DC is 4.9. We require to get these. So the property that you're going to use here is the tangent second property. The tangent in this case is AE. AE is the tangent. Then the second is EC. So there is a property connecting to that. And this is the property that when you take EC multiplied by ED, let me write it here, E multiplied by ED, EC multiplied by ED, EC multiplied by ED should give AE squared, should give AE squared, AE squared. That is the tangent second property. That EC multiplied by ED should give AE squared. So we already have um, ED. We are given ED and DC. So to get EC, EC, look at EC. EC will be given by 3.5 plus 4.9. 3.5 plus 4.9. So 3.5 plus 4.9. That is EC. Then multiply by ED. ED is 3.5. That should give AE squared like that. So we add 3.5 plus 4.9. You get that is 8.4. Multiply by 3.5 is equals to AE squared. So therefore, AE, to get AE, you simply get the square root of 8.4 times 3.5. And this will give, and you multiply that and get the, you're supposed to give this one correct to one decimal place. This will give 29.4. The square root of 29.4 is 5.4 centimeters. So that is how we get the length of tangent AE. Two, the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle. So look at this um, figure. How do we get the radius of the circle? To get the radius of the circle, we shall use the sign rule. And uh, the triangle that you're going to use is this triangle. So we shall use the sign rule. And uh, the triangle we shall use is DBC. So look at this triangle. DBC. So let me extract it here. DBC. So DBC. So the triangle we have DBC. So D, B, C. We already have uh, D, C. D, C, which is uh, 4.9. And um, we can name this side that is opposite D, a small d. Side opposite C, a small c. Side opposite B, a small b. And the same rule has connection with the radius of the circle. It has some connection with the radius of the circle, and this is the connection. Remember the sign rule? I will use the sign rule. B, this is how we state the sign rule. B over sign B is equals to D over sign D 
is sign D is equals to uh, the other one that I've left C over sign C is equals to 2 radius. This is the connection um, between the sign rule and the radius of the circle. So we're using the sign rule because here we have a circle that is, uh, or we have a triangle that has been circumscribed. So there's a circle that is touching all the vertices. So this is what we do. This is what we do. Uh, when you look at the values that you're given, the only thing that you can use here is this side B because this is where we have, uh, this is what you're going to use. And uh, let me see the angle. We have an angle. Uh, we have this angle at B. Look at the angle at B. The angle at B is 50. This angle is 50 and this one is 5. So the whole of this angle will therefore be 55. So the angle at B is 55. So the angle at B is 55. So that is why I choose to use this one because we know these values. So we know B. B is 4.9. Then sine of angle B. The angle B we've got this one is 55 degrees is equals to 2 radius. So you can see uh, this is the only one that we know. We don't have we don't have measurement for D, we don't have the measurement for C, and that is why we did not use that. Um, we simply take a calculator and divide this 4.9 divided by sine 55. That will give um, that one will give us 5.5 when you divide these, you get 5.9818 is equals to 2 radius. So when you divide 4.9 divided by sine of 55, you get 5.9818. Then to get radius, you simply divide both sides by 2. 5.9818 divided by 2. And this one will give you 2.99. And since we are required to give the answer correct to one decimal place, if you round off these, you'll get 3.0 centimeters. That is correct to one decimal place. So that is how you're supposed to solve that question.